Hey guys, and welcome back to another Object and Classes tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be going overloading default Python methods and why these are extremely useful. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just stick around for one second and I will explain it. So first of all, I just want to talk about what I've already coded here. I just have a very basic point class and you can see that our point object has three kind of attributes in x, y, and then our coordinates, which is self.x and self.y. We have a very basic method that can simply move us by x and by y when we type it in. Okay, I've created four points down here and these are what we're going to use to kind of test out some examples that I'm about to create. So in Python, uh, remember my first video, I was talking about the fact that if you create integer objects, so for example, I say like i equals five and like z equals five. If I wanted to add these together, all I simply have to do is well put a plus sign, right? And Python knows that this plus sign means, okay, add these two things together. Now, how does it know this and how does it know what to do? Well, with integers is pretty straightforward, but what if we start doing things like strings, right? If you do s and then you go like six, seven, eight, how does Python know how to add these two strings together? Well, it would make sense to just append it on top, but someone actually had to code this functionality in. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video, except with our custom point object. Okay. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So pretty much what we want to eventually do at the end of this video is be able to add, multiply, subtract, um, and compare points without having to reference their attributes outside of the class. So right now, uh, if I do P1 plus P2, our program's gonna crash because it doesn't know what that means. But by the end of this video, we're gonna be able to do that, okay? So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. So in Python, there's a bunch of default kind of operations and methods that you can apply on classes. And by default, uh, they're not defined, right? On our point class, if we try to add two things right now, that doesn't make sense. So what we're gonna do is add that method. So to do this, to add the We'll add operation. You're just going to do define underscore underscore add. Okay. And then in here, you need to give another point object. So what happens when I try to add a point and another point object? Well, whatever, we're going to return a new point. Okay. That is simply equal to self dot X plus P dot X and then self dot Y plus P dot Y. So what this is doing is since we're passing another point object, so when we do like P1 plus P2, P2 becomes P and P1 becomes self. So we're gonna grab the coordinates of P1, add them to P2 and return that in a new point object, okay? Now the same works for subtract, multiply and division and for a few others as well. So I'm just simply gonna copy this, okay? And paste it one more time. And instead of add now, you could probably guess, I'm going to put sub and what this is going to do is allow us to subtract points. So it's going to be the exact same, except now we're simply going to subtract the coordinates. Now with multiplication, this one is simply define underscore underscore mole underscore underscore. And this is going to allow us to use the asterisk or the star uh, to multiply two different point objects. So same thing, it takes a point. And in this case, when we multiply points, I could return a new point with multiplied coordinates, but the way it actually works, if you know anything about vectors, is we're simply going to return the scalar product, which means you multiply the first two x coordinates, get a value, in this case we would get 9, and then you actually add it to the y coordinates multiplied together. So in this case we'd have 9, um, what do you call it, plus 8, and that would give us 17. We're not returning a new point object, it's a scalar or like just a number value, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to return self.x multiplied by p.x plus self.y multiplied by p.y. And those are the three that I'm going to stick with right now. And I'm going to show you a bunch more that we can use to compare point objects using greater than equal than sign in just a second. So I want to test if this is working. So let's create a new point. I'm going to say 0.5 is equal to p1 plus p2. And I'm going to say 0.6 is equal to p4 minus p1 okay and then we'll even go as far as creating p7 and multiplying p2 and p3 just to make sure everything's working so now i'm simply going to print to the screen p5 p6 and p7 and let's see what we get so you can see here i get main point object main point object and nine now 
the way that this worked and the reason that we're not actually getting a coordinate value is because I have to show you another method that we can use so that this was actually going to give us something meaningful because right now when we point, print out our point objects, right, because 0.5 is a new point object because when we add 0.1 and 0.2, we are returned, sorry, a new point object, right? So if we want to make this meaningful and not just show us the address in memory uh, where the point is stored, which it currently is right now, we need to add another method and this one is called str okay and what this is going to do is this is going to be called every time we try to convert our point object into a string so when we try to print our point object it automatically looks for str and if it doesn't find it it gives us this kind of uh, gibberish right here but if it does find it it's simply going to well use the value that we return so in this case we want to return i think we'd want to return from string uh, probably the self dot coordinates, right? So I want it to look something like this. We have brackets and then plus str and then self dot x plus a comma plus str self dot y and plus and then another bracket like this. Okay. So now if I try to print 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and 0 0.7, you can see what we get. And there we go. So now instead of getting that gibberish, we get 6, 6, negative 3, and negative 3. Now keep in mind, you can make this anything you want, but you do have to return a string value here for this to work. Okay, so the next methods we're going to talk about, I'm just going to put them above string here just for good practice, is going to be comparing two points. So this is great. Now we can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, but what if we want to compare? So what if we want to see if point 0.1 is greater than point 0.2 or if point 0.3 is greater than point 0.4? Well, how do we do that? We first have to determine how are we going to compare points? Are we simply going to compare the x's and the y's? Or are we going to find like the magnitude of a point? Like what are we going to do to compare which is larger? In my case, I want to find the length of a point from the origin. So in this case, the way this would work, um, I think I can just bring up a little grid program here and just draw it for you quickly. So if you have an origin like this, okay, I'm just using my mouse right now and you had a point here and a point here. Well, from the origin, this would have a distance. And from the origin, this would have a distance. Obviously, this could be like a distance of seven. This could be a distance of two and seven would win, right? Because we don't really care about the negatives. If you had something all the way over here with a larger distance, then well, we would want that to win, right? Um, so that's the way that we're going to compare them. And I'll talk about that and how we do that in one second. So to compare, we have four major comparisons, I think that we can do. Anyways, I'll type them and we'll see. So one of them is greater than, and that is GT, okay? And then you can do self, and you also need another point object like this. Another one is greater than or equal to, and greater than or equal to is simply GE, okay? And then same thing, we need P. We have less than, so define, and you can probably guess, LS, or sorry, LT, what am I saying? Less than, and then we also have less than or equal to, so LE, like that. And we have one more, and this is simply equal to. So this is if we do the double equal sign, then it's going to give us a comparison. Now, in these methods, we need to return a true or a false value. So in greater than, remember the way I said I wanted to compare them is to get like the magnitude of the point from the origin. So I'm just going to add a method in here. I'm just going to call it, uh, let's do length maybe. Okay. And then in here, I'm simply, actually, we don't need to take anything. We're just going to return the math.sqrt and I'm going to import math right up here and this is simply how you get the length from the origin okay of self.x to the power of 2 plus what am I doing self.y to the exponent 2 and this is going to give us the length okay so import length so when I'm doing greater than I want to see if return self.x or what am I saying self.length is greater than p.length like this okay and I believe we do actually need these square brackets here so all this is going to do is it's a boolean condition it says well if the length of our self is greater than the other length well then we're simply greater than so let's just copy this and put it in here and in this case we're just going to do greater than or equal sign because this is greater than or equal to we'll copy this again change this around to less than and one more time, and this is now just going to be less than or equal to. Now, if we're seeing if two things are equal to each other, well, 
that's pretty easy as well. All we can do is simply take this, or actually the way we're gonna do this is just see if the coordinates are the same. Because if we try doing the math dot square root and we get like a large decimal number, sometimes decimals kind of mess up in Python and they don't get the same precision. So let's just return if self.x equals equals p dot x and self dot y equals equals p dot y because that would mean that they are at the same point, right? Okay, so let's do some comparisons now. So let's just simply print if p1 equals equals p2 and then we'll print if p1 is greater than p2 and we can print if p4 is less than or equal to uh, p3, okay? And just test these out. Okay, so we get false, true, and true. And you guys are welcome to mess around with these and kind of figure those out for yourself. So I will show you, I'm not gonna go through all of the methods cause there's a lot of ones that you can overload, but I'll show you how you can have a look at all of the different methods. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull up a web page here that has like a large list of all of the kind of built-in methods that you can override or like, what do you call it, overload. Um, there is a way in Python to like see all of them and print them to the screen, but I completely forget the command, so I apologize. If one of you guys knows that command, please let me know in the comments, because I've been looking for it and I can't find it. But anyways, you can see here, there's a ton, like I think there's like a hundred or something of built-in ones that you can use, like add, sub, mul, div, true div, floor div. You can read through here and see what they all do. Some useful ones I will mention is probably len. I probably should have talked about that one, but it's if you call the len function on something so actually i'll show you len really quickly just because i feel like i should have talked about it. so instead of doing length here i could have just done define underscore underscore len underscore underscore and what this would have done now is if i call like len of p1 it's just going to return uh whatever value i have here so math dot square root okay that's like a really useful one too so i don't know why i didn't talk about that but anyways so i'll go back to this page for one second and see real numbers slice slice can be useful if you're dealing with kind of like list objects that you're creating items and slices you can go through all of these and kind of read them yourself i'm not going to talk about all of them because i'm sure these you guys probably won't end up using very much um, the ones that are very important are the ones i talked about so yeah so you can see built-ins like there's something you can do with like dir built-ins to see them all uh and yeah i'll leave this link in the description in case any of you guys are interested in having a look at these but there is some way in python again if you know that way please let me know Okay guys, so that's been it for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna be talking about static and class methods. And then in the future video, I'm gonna be talking about private, private and public classes in Python. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one.